So, my friend, I want to ask you, have you been listening to some of my podcasts for a while and identified for yourself all the areas that you feel your business could be better in? Maybe you just are so busy you haven't yet mastered the working as much as you like bit. (laughs) Or maybe you're just not bringing in the money, like you're struggling with the income, or it's just not enough. Well, it's time for us to have a conversation. In the show notes, there is a link to my evolution call. If you're a dance boss and you are ready to take action, let's have a chat and let's see where I can take you. Welcome, lovelies, to the Ultimate Dance Business Podcast. My name is Deborah Laws, the dance business expert. My passion is to help you turn your passion into profit while guiding you to work less and earn more. I'm super excited to share interviews with you that I know will inspire and motivate you in your schools, as well as my solo shows where I shall be sharing some great tips and strategies. So if you love the show, please do remember to review, subscribe and share it with your fellow dance boss friends. So let's get stuck into the business of dance. Hello, I hope you're good. Now today we're going to talk about something that might give you the ick. (laughs) Because we're going to talk about following up with people that have made some effort to come towards you and ask about your services, your classes, your your schools, but then it hasn't kind of really gone anywhere. You know, those people that ghost you or they say they're going to come and then they don't show up or maybe they give you an excuse like five times and in the end you give up on them. So basically, if someone has, we call it coming towards you, it's a coming towards you energy, they've made the effort to reach out to you, whether that be on email, through your website, through social media, text, phone, however, gosh, there's so many nowadays, isn't there? But however they have made that effort to ask about your services, they have come towards you. But for whatever reason, and it could be completely out of your hands, in fact, it's just not gone anywhere. It hasn't hasn't followed through to a trial and then enrolling and then, you know, becoming a student. So what do we do with these people? What do we do with these bunch of people showed an interest, but then didn't, like didn't go further with that interest. Well, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're not losing them. They may not have gone through your process and signed up right now, but don't forget they were the ones that were interested. You didn't drag them off the street kicking and screaming. Well, I hope not anyway. Um, you know, they made that effort. So they were the ones that genuinely had an interest, even if it was a very loose interest. So we don't want to let those people fall through the cracks. We don't want to give up on them. We don't want to lose hope with those people. There could be a million and one reasons why this relationship didn't go anywhere It might be that when they discovered the day and time, it clashed with another activity. It won't necessarily always clash with that activity. They might be back in a few weeks or a couple of months or even a couple of years. Or maybe the pricing wasn't for them right now. Maybe your pricing was super cheap and they weren't looking for the cheapest. They were looking for the best. I know that's how they look at that's their buyer's mentality. And so they went to find someone else that was more expensive. (laughs) I know you normally think it's, oh, they went somewhere else because I was too expensive. It actually is normally the other way around. Anyway, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. Um, Maybe they didn't come back to you because your reply went into junk and they actually thought that you hadn't replied and you weren't interested. That's that's the really frustrating one. Um, Maybe they need to check to see if grandma could do the run because they're still at work. And then they forgot to ask grandma or grandma was ill for a couple of weeks and their parent didn't want to impose. Like there are a million and one reasons why this relationship didn't continue. And rarely are they actually closed doors. 
very rarely when someone hears from you and hears all your information, is it a no, we don't like you, we don't like your reply. It's a no, definitely not. So if it's if that's actually very rare that that happens, I mean, it could happen if you take two weeks to get back to them. They might be pretty peeved by that stage. They might have already found somewhere else, in which case it's a definite no. But hopefully you've replied within 20, 24 to 48 hours. That's kind of my going. That You're still in the five-star dance school experience group, if that's what happens. So if you are not completely out of their radar, it's just not really progressed yet, what is it that we should be doing? So this podcast today is all about following up. So following up is when you go back to somebody, either because they've asked some more questions or because they've blanked you, they've ghosted you. And what we're going to do is assume that you've given them all the information and answered their questions and you kind of put the ball back in their court and made it, you know, super easy for us. So it's ready for them to just say, yes, let's get her in for a trial or him in for a trial or they in for a trial. So the next kind of correspondence from you might look something like this. Hey, Alison. I just wanted to check that my last reply hadn't landed in junk because I know that happens sometimes. Were you still interested and can, did you have any further questions? It can literally be as short as sweet as that. Then you leave it for a week or a few days and then you go back in again. Hey, Alison, um, I see that you didn't reply to my last two emails. I'm slightly worried that you're not getting my the information or maybe you've just been really busy and you haven't had a chance to get back to me yet which is absolutely fine but do let me know whether it's easier for you to text me or whatsapp me so now you're going to give them an alternative way to contact you if emailing isn't very easy um because we're really excited in getting holly into our classes and did you know in the last year holly's group age group have been up to and then drop a whole load of this is what they've been doing. So what we don't want to do is just keep emailing them with the same thing. Hi, are you interested? You never got back to me. Hi, just checking if you're interested because you never got back to me. Hello, are you ignoring me? Are you coming or should I take you off my list? Like that's not really helping anyone apart from it being a little tap on the shoulder and a reminder and a nudge. It might well be that one of the reasons that they haven't come back to you is because they haven't quite bought into you yet. Maybe the day and time was fine, but perhaps you replied when you were super busy and you just gave them quite a cold response. It's on Tuesdays at four o'clock. Do you want to come? Like that makes my toes curl a little bit, but say, you know, that was the response that they got. And they're like, oh, I'm not really sure. Like I'm not feeling much love from this principal or, or admin person, whoever does this for you. You know, maybe they kind of wanted you to be a bit more interested. Maybe they were hoping that you might ask a few questions about their child, that you might take a bit more time over explaining what the class is about. Perhaps they're just a bit underwhelmed. You haven't really hooked them in. So if we just keep sending, oh, well, are you coming or not then emails? which I, I know you wouldn't send that. <laughs> but if we just keep sending them reminders, we're not helping them to get over the line. We're not warming them up anymore so that they feel more, more inclined to want to book a trial. So after the, hey, I just wanted to check, I didn't land in spam email. The next one would be similar to start with, but then I would go into a little story of, you know, maybe what the students have been up to in the last year or what some of the achievements are of your current students, or maybe um, some of the benefits that, that this person's child will get by coming along to that class that they inquired about. They may need a little bit more nurturing, a little more hand-holding, let's say. So that's what I would put in kind of email three or four. And I try to mix it up a little bit. I don't just stick with emails. If you have managed to collect their phone number, or, you, or they messaged you maybe on Facebook or social media or Instagram or TikTok or wherever, 
if there's another form of communication, that, another angle that you could try, it might be that they see that. But as I said, everything's just landing in your in their spam folder. So I would then maybe reach out to them using a different form of communication. So I thought I would just share with you guys today the... Um, planners that I have produced for dance school owners because these are flying out of Amazon like hotcakes and if you don't have yours yet then all you have to do is pop to Amazon and type into the search Deborah Laws and all three books will come up. So the ultimate dance business planner I designed for you so that you had a little bit of a Deborah on your desktop. <laughs> the planners are full of business training, tips, motivational quotes, uh, things to do at the start of the month, things to do at the end of the month, ways in which you can plan out your marketing and your retention. And they are selling all over the world. So go to Amazon, grab your number one best-selling ultimate dance business planner and enjoy mapping out the growth for your studio. And don't be afraid to leave a voice message. You know, you can really come across as being very kind and very warm and very, you know, we'd really like to get to know you and your child and find out more about them and make sure that we can find the ideal class for them. Um, it's so much easier in a voice message. I even do video messages. I do like a selfie video and I'll send like a 30 minute, a 30 minute. <laughs> you'd be very happy if you got a 30 minute video message for me I don't think um, a 30 second video message you know just saying um, you know I've reached out to you on email I'm guessing you know the spam monster has been gobbling up my emails and you haven't been getting it and I really didn't want you to think that I wasn't coming back to you this is the information that you requested you know shall we get you signed into a trial so try different different types and different forms. Now, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, Deborah, this is taking up or is going to take up so much time. And I just don't have that amount of time to be sending four, five, six follow-ups. They say the minimum, the, you know, the, the earliest you should stop following up is after seven times, seven times. And at some point along that way, if they are really not interested and they don't want to hear from you, they will come back to you and let you know. You know, you'll get a reply. Thanks very much, but we've decided to go to another school. No problem at all. I just didn't want you to think that we weren't interested. Hope she enjoys her new school. Like if they really don't want to, they can come back to you and say no. Or if you've automated these replies, they can unsubscribe. When we get to like the seventh point of contact, this is going to be a breakup message. So this is going to be, I'm guessing as we've sent several messages and texts and I haven't heard back from you that you're no longer interested and I really don't want to bother you and keep, you know, landing in front of you if that's the case. So I'm going to take it if I don't hear back from this email or this message that this is our breakup message. Um, however, if you want to just let me know if I can continue to send you special offers or one-off opportunities like our workshops or our summer camps, then that would be great. And I will just email you from time to time, no more than once a month, um, just keeping you informed of what's going on in the dance store. If, if I don't hear from you, I'll take it that you're not happy for me to do that either, in which case I will delete all your information. That's after the seventh touch point, though. So there's a lot of opportunities to warm this person up before you get to the breakup email or text. Now, I know some of you, and this is why I started the podcast saying this is going to give some of you the ick, are kind of cringing a little bit as I'm saying seven times because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I really hate bothering somebody that much. Um, are they going to get fed up with me? Are they going to, you know, I'm a bit embarrassed to keep going back to someone that many times. I would say 10 years ago, yes. 
10 years ago, it would have felt very, very pushy, if you like, very salesy, very pushy, maybe a bit sleazy. (laughs) But nowadays, uh -uh, not so much. There is so much marketing and advertising that flashes before our eyes on a daily basis that unless you shout and you're determined and you keep going, it's so easy for people to lose you. What happens is somebody gets 50, 60 emails a day and yours was just one of them and they just scrolled through and just didn't see it. But then on the third time or the fourth time, they finally saw it and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad they got back to me. I thought that that they hadn't replied and now I've seen it was sitting in junk or thank goodness they text. I haven't checked my emails for the last three or four weeks. Had they not text me, I would never have got their answer. And yes, we are still super keen. People will be grateful for the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh point of contact. I can't tell you how many times I've seen something come through and I thought, oh, I might be interested in that, but I'm not quite sure. And I'm in the middle of something and I'm busy, so I've ignored it. And then a couple of days later, I've had another email. Oh yeah, I I really must look into that. Perhaps I'll click on this link. And then I click on a link and I start reading and I think, oh, I haven't got time to do this right now. So I leave it. And then a few days later, I get another email or I see something on social media. I think, oh, there's that thing again. But now's not a good time to do that. And then the fourth time I see something, I think, right, if I don't do this, I'm going to forget about this. And I might not see all these reminders coming up anymore. So I'll actually go ahead and reply to the fourth one. If somebody had given up on me, if they'd only sent one reply or two or even three, chances are they'd have lost me. I mean, that's just the world we live in nowadays. And people expect a professional company or business to follow up. Like if I was to go and, for example, in fact, this is a true story that's happened to me last year. Phil and I went to check out a venue for our conference um, to see where we might go when we outgrow the current one. And we went along and we spent a whole heap of time with um, the events coordinator looking at this venue. We were probably there about two hours. We asked lots of questions and we came away with a, right, we're going to go and think about it. We've got to look at our budget. Um, it, we'll wait for you to come back to, to us with all the answers to the questions we've answered and then we'll take it from there. Do you know what? Four weeks went by and we didn't get a single follow-up email. Now, that to me, especially being a businesswoman that knows her stuff, that gave out really big red flags. Like if they're not professional enough, if they don't have a system where they follow up with clients, especially as I'd asked them some questions, like massive red flag to me that they're not that professional. That started to say to me, and what if they don't reply to my emails when I want some information? And what if they forget how many meals I ordered? And what if they don't remember the dates that are <laughs> we turn up and it's locked up? Like, I mean, all sorts of <laughs> crazy things was going through my head. But the point is, nowadays, people expect this kind of service. So if they are emailing you and you reply and then you never hear back and then they don't hear from you again, in 2024, that's just not good enough. So on that note, <laughs> oh, that sounded like a bit of a ticking off there at the end. It's not a ticking off. It's just a trying to help your mindset around you know, following up multiple times. We asked this question at the conference this summer and we said, you know, put your hand up. How many of you follow up uh, once? And a few people put their hand up. How many follow you up twice? And a few less people put their hand up. How many? And we carried on. And honestly, hardly any of you were following up more than three times. We're talking like the odd one or two went past three times. So if you became that person that goes all the way through to seven, I guarantee you'll be soaking up a bunch of people that you would normally be losing. All right, my darlings, I hope that has helped. And I'd love for you to give it a try. What is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that eventually someone will go back, come back to you and say, thank you very much, but we're not interested. Like, great. Now you know. Now you know what to do with this person. That's the worst case scenario. So even though to you it feels icky, let's just do it anyway and see what results we get. All right, my loves, I hope to see you in the Dance Business Lab community Facebook group or on IG at 
Dance Business Lab. Uh, If not, I'll see you on the next podcast. Take care. So, my friend, I want to ask you, have you been listening to some of my podcasts for a while and identified for yourself all the areas that you feel your business could be better in? Maybe you just are so busy you haven't yet mastered the working as much as you like bit. (laughs) Or maybe you're just not bringing in the money, like you're struggling with the income, or it's just not enough. Well, it's time for us to have a conversation. In the show notes, there is a link to my evolution call. If you're a dance boss and you are ready to take action, let's have a chat and let's see where I can take you. Welcome, lovelies, to the Ultimate Dance Business Podcast. My name is Deborah Laws, the dance business expert. My passion is to help you turn your passion into profit while guiding you to work less and earn more. I'm super excited to share interviews with you that I know will inspire and motivate you in your schools, as well as my solo shows where I shall be sharing some great tips and strategies. So if you love the show, please do remember to review, subscribe and share it with your fellow dance boss friends. So let's get stuck into the business of dance.